All right, let's go and talk more about the science behind today's eclipse. Astronomers have been preparing for this event for years, and they will study it from the ground, the air, and space. And here to explain the research uh, taking place during the eclipse is CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood. Bill, always good to see you. Hey, good to see you. All right, what in particular are scientists studying during the eclipse? Well, you know, it's really interesting. When the moon completely blocks out the sun, you can see the corona, the outer atmosphere. Now that's always there, it's just you can't see it in daylight because the sun just absolutely overwhelms it. But the corona is very interesting. It's a high energy uh, region of the sun. If you look at the sun's visible surface, the temperature is about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. You move just a little ways away into the corona and it jumps up to over a million degrees. So what does that? How does that work? They don't know. So during solar eclipses, it's a perfect time to look because you can see the corona. And given the track of this eclipse goes all the way across the United States, uh, scores and scores of scientists, NASA airplanes, balloons, satellites will all be studying the sun, trying to get some hints about what's powering, what energizes the corona. That's, that's probably the number one scientific goal. It is fascinating, just to say the least. Uh, how will they collect their data? Oh, in, in every kind of way you can imagine. Now there's telescopes looking that of course will be recording this to different uh, resolutions. There are balloon-borne instruments that will be looking. There are jet planes that will be way up in the atmosphere so they get a totally unobstructed view that will race along with the eclipse while they can. Uh, an enormous amount of data. In fact, there's two citizen science experiments going on. There's one called Mega Movie, where there are apps you can get for your smartphone, iOS or Android. It will automatically run the camera, collect imagery, and send it in. They're going to put together clips from all over the country, from the public as well as from researchers, uh, to make a movie of the total eclipse as much as they can all the way across the country. There's another project called Citizen Cape, where there's 60 stations along the, the track of the, uh, of the eclipse that have identical telescopes, computers, and cameras. They're doing the same thing, but they're taking highly calibrated images that will be very similar in terms of how they're oriented, how the photos are taken. They're going to merge all that data together to get a continuous look or a near continuous look at the corona. So there's just a vast amount of, of, of data taking that will be going on throughout the day. And it's going to be really interesting to see what they come up with when all is said and done. Uh, just amazing. Now, uh, Bill, some experts are saying this will be the most documented total eclipse in history. Uh, how oh. are scientists going to take advantage of all of that content there? Oh, well, <laughs> they're going to spend a lot of time analyzing it. I mean, this, this is going to be a smorgasbord of data for the, for, the, for the scientists. I don't think, I can't think of any other eclipse or phenomenon like this that will have been studied to the degree this thing's going to be studied with. I mean, like I said, NASA alone's got something like 14 satellites that'll be looking at this, uh, balloon-borne instruments all across the country, jet planes, telescopes along the ground track. There's a very large solar telescope over my shoulder in the background that's going to be streaming video in different wavelengths of the sun throughout the day. Uh, really fascinating stuff, and I think the, I can't even imagine how many gigabytes of data is going to be generated by all this, but it's going to be a lot. All right, and for our viewers who are just now joining us, why are we in Carbondale? We're in Carbondale because the duration of the eclipse here is the maximum in the country. You know, if you think about the moon's shadow, it's about 70 miles wide as it starts in Oregon and sweeps along about a 2,600 mile track to South Carolina. The duration of the eclipse in Oregon on the coast is about two minutes or maybe a second or two less. By the time the shadow gets to Carbondale, it's 2 minutes and 41 or 42 seconds. Just south of here, a few miles, is where the actual point is that the duration is absolutely maximum. So here in Carbondale, you're going to be able to see it for as long as it can be seen in the United States. All right. And then, of course, it'll move on to the southeast, and, and the times will get shorter as it moves on. But it's, a, it's going to be a fun place to watch if the weather cooperates. Yeah, just making its way across the uh, United States there. Final question for you, Bill. Uh, does anything make this eclipse more or less significant than any other uh, total solar eclipse in the past? Well, I think it's two things. One is you've got a, a track of totality crossing an industrialized country from coast to coast, which means there a lot of high-tech instrumentation is going to be brought to bear scientifically. But I think socially this is a, in a class by itself because we're now in the age of social media. You know, everyone's got a smartphone, or, or most people have smartphones. There's so much communication back and forth, so much chatter, family members, people spread across the country. Um, I think the social media dimension is utterly unique for this eclipse, and I think that's what's generating some of this buzz. I mean, I think it's a, it's a really interesting communal phenomenon, if you will, the way this is being shared among everybody in the nation. All right, that is why you are the expert, Bill Harwood in Carbondale, Illinois. Bill, thank you.